expect strong language and some scenes you may find upsetting first on BBC One. Never have wrestlers had so much fun while someone dives on them from a height. Whether you're a fan of insane championship wrestling or not, this guy needs no introduction. So, my music started, and this is the curtain, and my music's waiting to be played, and everybody's buzzing, and I'm just sort of still like that, shaking myself. But then this kicks in. Hopefully everybody's clapping. I'm like that. Send it. Three, four, go. You spin. And then when it kicks in like this, I go like that. I go. It's your sin! Then I go up. Bounce about the ring. Drop to the referee, kid on that's the referee. Against the referee. Credo! This is the world of insane championship wrestling. A group of friends who fight together and play together. <laughs> This is the story of their biggest year, as they strive to make a living. I want you to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I met a full-time living a professional wrestler, right? Struggle with life at home. I'm skint sometimes, like really skint, like mega skint. And put on the biggest show of their lives. It's a really, really big deal. In four months' time, they will put on a fight night at one of Glasgow's biggest venues with double the capacity of their usual gigs. 1,100 tickets is not a laughing matter. But can they sell it out? Reach a new audience? And put their insane fight club on the map? Hey, I'll see you later, right? See you later. <laughs> right. Uh, right, and take care. Uh, yeah, well, Enjoy uh, yourself. Uh, just so you get your bed. <laughs> mm. Say bye bye. Bye. See you later on. Be good luck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Try not to get too stressed. Right, cool. I'll try. Love you. Love you, sweetie. Love you, honey. Right, bye-bye. When I drive to the shows, I'm either, either shiting myself or I'm mega excited. Right now, I'm shiting myself and I'm mega excited. But I'd probably say right now, I'm closer to mere shiting myself than I'm more excited. It's about 70 30. I'm just going to go and have a wee look at the, the crowd, but I don't want them to really to see me. But it puts your mind at ease um, if you know there's a big crowd already there and the doors haven't opened. And <laughs> I can see through that gap there in that pub that, fuck's sake, man, the queue is huge. It's the Sunday, a fucking tea in the park. Tea in the park's happening right now. And look at your crowd. I see dub, I see dub, I see dub. That's what I'm saying. I'll not feel actually real until Billy Kirkwood, the MC, the ring announcer, when she goes out into that ring and then they all start shouting. I see dub, I see dub, I see dub, I see dub. It's saying championship wrestling is basically professional wrestling that you've seen the telly. The only thing is it's aimed at an over 18s crowd. Got a lot of blood, violence, bad language, stuff like that. It's a drama, it's a comedy, it's a soap opera, it's a performance art, it's a stunt show. It's like going to the theatre, theatre for the new generation, where people get the shit kicked out of Quiet, please. Cheers, guys.
Mark Dallas is the man in charge of Insane Championship Wrestling, or ICW, the fighting phenomenon that spilled out of nightclubs and onto the streets of Glasgow. It seemed like in the late 90s that everybody was alternative and everybody wanted to shock people and be different. And then it seemed like society sort of changed where you've got to sort of fit into a genre. Whereas what ICWs are about is stunning it, being different, uh, no worrying about it. I don't do any tricks, I just jump. Don't be something that other people want you to be, be you. From the feared to the loved, the bizarre to the hardcore. Everyone has a home at IC Dub. For owner Mark, the obsession with wrestling began at an early age. When I was a kid, I liked watching pro wrestling because it seemed like it was real life superheroes on my telly beating each other up. So that kind of that threw me as a young child. And in later years, it was this childhood obsession that began to look like it might provide a way out of tough times for Mark and his partner Helen. When Helen got pregnant with Danny, uh, we need to get a house. We're staying in her at the time. So uh, the council put us in a temporary accommodation, which was here on Red Road. It was full of junkies and everybody just thrown in, all the dregs of society, and then me and my missus. Hey, what do they do now? Um, I was just sitting there depressed and um, just thinking about how I could provide a better life for my way because my way wasn't getting brought up here, that just wasn't going to happen. Who's the strongest? Ah! What I did was I thought I'll book five shows two months apart each time. I don't know what happened, man, but we put on the first show and it got about 80 people in, but they loved it. Um. And then the next show it was sold out. The next show they had to bring their chairs in. The next show we had to turn people away. ICW now has a regular spot at the Garage nightclub in Glasgow. But with Mark barely breaking even every month and none of his wrestlers earning enough to make a full-time living, he's about to take the biggest gamble of his career so far. So this is the main hall, this is ABC One, it's where you guys are going to be. Glasgow's ABC is a venue that holds twice the usual ICW crowd. And in just two months' time, Mark plans a sellout. Capacity is about 1,300. Aye. 1,300 for a gig? Yeah, for like standing room only, no chairs. So with a ring in that, we're talking 1,100, something like you that. Can, yeah, 1,100, yeah, about Aye. maybe, maybe 1,150. But Not bear bad. in mind, you have got the balcony as well. Aye, would you be all right with somebody jumping after? <laughs> this is the first time I've been in here when it's been empty. It's quite daunting because you realise just how humongous this venue is. And I we get big crowds at the garage and stuff, but the crowd we're going to need in here to sell out is double that, do you know what I mean? And that's no joke, man, that's near laughing matter. Everything's riding on this, and the company's reputation, my rent, <laughs> my Wayne's Christmas. So, I mean, 1,100 tickets is not a laughing matter. It's not this fucking empty on the night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My dream is to have it that if you work for an ICW, it's your full-time job. You're a professional wrestler. Like, the, the dictionary definition of a professional wrestler, you are somebody who makes a full-time living from professional wrestling. And then we can all get old and we can all say, oh, we were all wrestlers, you know what I mean? That's, that's how we made a living, we were in the wrestling business. One of the wrestlers Mark's relying on is fan favourite, Gredo. I'm a chubby wee underdog, a chubby wee chancer. I'm a bit as fit as my gran, but I love wrestling. Over the past two years, Gredo's videos have gathered momentum online. James Scott, listen, a lot of folk have been asking me, why are you challenging James Scott? No. These videos have transformed him from the ultimate fan to one of the most popular wrestlers in ICW. Right, sort yourself down there, you're all hanging the wang way. Right, need a double, my double chin. 
I need my glasses. Yeah. No, nope. higher, please. Well, I can't, I can't see you. <clears throat> you can see me in here, you know? Well, just... Right. But then you see the lamp. Grado is somebody who was um, perceived as a nobody in Scottish wrestling. He'd had a handful of matches there 10 years. Mark Dallas loved my video on the internet. He thought it was funny and he thought, here, I could use you for ICW. So then we sat and we came up with this whole story about Get Grado booked, and it wasn't meant to be this big thing. And it all came to a conclusion when I got the chance to jump the barrier in a live crowd. <laughs> It was the best feeling in the world, the crowd were going nuts. And Grado's popularity just uh, exploded. Why can I not do this right? Fuck sake. Squeeze it, hang I'm fucking squeeze it. Squeeze it. Fucking geezer, fuck it. Fuck it. Look. With Mark moving the company towards bigger and better things, Grado's rethinking his image. They fives, eh? <laughs> Because I'm fed up turning up at shows and being the only fat one, or the only one that, that, that can't take their tap off. Well, I couldn't take my tap off, but it ends up that the next day, I end up looking at pictures and I go, oh, look at that nicky me, man. Because I feel as if I've got a pair of man boobs. Well, I've got a pair of man boobs. No, everybody says, oh, it's your gimmick, you need to be, it's, it's funny that you're the fat, the fat guy and all that. But I can still be fat and have a bit of definition about myself, you know what I mean? That's what I'm going for, isn't it, Joke? Yeah, it is, sir. Think I can do it? I'm sure you can. Got a geezer on? <laughs> Oh yeah, fucker. Don't drop it. <laughs> yeah, so I squeeze him out. That's it, uh, that's it. Uh, the mother of a proud of son. At the other end of the scale is one of ICW's hardcore heavyweights, Jack Jester. When I was at school, I wanted to be a tattoo artist, a wrestler, or a clown. And so far, I've managed to do all three. <laughs> I do kind of think you should be yourself. Don't ever, don't ever just go with the flow and, you know, whatever everybody else is doing. My, my parents saw that I wanted to be a wrestler, and they could have said, don't be so stupid. When I started wrestling, I was just turned 16, so they had the power to stop me, but they never have. <laughs> my mum comes to most shows. She came to her first ICW show, on her birthday, actually. <laughs> About six minutes in, I regretted asking her to come. That's when I was hanging over a balcony somewhere. <laughs> My dad has never, never seen me wrestle. Ever. One, two, get down! Who's well, getting the fall? Would you it's an elimination, is it? I think we should do elimination. ICW's next show is at the Edinburgh Picture House. It's an important stepping stone on the way to the biggest show of their lives at Glasgow's ABC in seven weeks' time. And as part of the master plan to draw a wider audience, Mark's bringing over two huge American wrestling stars. Comedy king Colt Cabana and ultimate hard man Sabu will be pitted against Grado and Jack Jester. Number one is Grado Cabana. To draw in new fans, they need to see on the posters a recognisable face. So, so basically, that's what the Americans were for, to bring attention to new fans. Because I know once we get them in the door, I know we'll put on a show that they'll want to come back and see again. You know, it's just the hard bit as a promoter is getting people in the door the first time. I don't know. For the plan to pay off, Mark and his writing partner, Renfrew, need to ensure they write a good storyline. We just... Like base the shows on basic human emotions, things that every single person in the world can relate to. This guy hates this guy, this lassie left. You know what I mean? Hate, love, you know, anger, joy, all these different things. The storylines are the stuff of soap opera, but the pain is very definitely real. 
whenever somebody finds out you're involved in wrestling, the first thing they always say is, oh, it's fake, or is it fake? And you're like, well, define fake. You know what I mean? Like, my mate getting hit with a steel chair isn't he fake. You know what I mean? The boys, like, getting really hurt, that's no fake. He's a paw. Come on. He's a paw. Come on, paw. 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 With the biggest show of their lives at Glasgow's ABC just over six weeks away, the Edinburgh show brings everyone an opportunity to fine tune. For Grado, the fight against American star Colt Cabana is the chance to fulfil a boyhood dream. Colt Cabana is one of the biggest professional wrestlers in the world. He's been in the WWE, he's wrestled all over the world, he's one of the number one names, and he's one of my favourite wrestlers of all time. I've loved him since I was about 14 years old, ever since I seen him 10 years ago. So when I found out I was actually going to get the chance to actually wrestle Colt Cabana, I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely delighted. I was buzzing. Colt, you'll be wrestling against internet sensation Grado. So what am I? Well, I mean, you, you, you're, you're also an internet sensation. No, you were like, hey, this guy's an internet sensation. I meant to say international sensation. I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to beat the living shit out of Grado. I think that's him doing his Grado move there. We actually thought it was a face he was going through and thinking that when he gets older, he would look back and have a laugh at the way he used to love his wrestling, but obviously not. He broke umpteen beds, practicing with his pals, cost us a fortune. All the new beds we had to buy, he even broke mine. Well, look at us here, right? You think I don't do much in the wrestling? Don't do much in the ring? Check this out. Watch. Here I go up top. Right, moonsault, it's a backflip. Watch this, check it out. Moonsault, one, two, three. The last show I went to see him in, he got hurt over the head of a chair and there was blood everywhere, and I was absolutely raging. Oh, so I was in Edinburgh. As part of the build-up to the next show, Grado's picking up Colt at Edinburgh Airport. They're filming promotional footage that will end up online. Hey, okay, what I'm here for? Big man's just landed. Gonna take him back up the road, take him home. Go Cabana, go Cabana, it's your sale. With the welcome party over, it's time for Grado and Colt to hit Edinburgh city centre and spread the word about the big fight. Yay! There he is! What do you think? Are you a Grado fan? Grado! 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 Yeah, put your hand out. One! Hey! There you go, troops. There you go, my man. There you go, man. There you go, big one. I'll see you, man. You like wrestling. You like wrestling. You like wrestling. You like wrestling. Come to see bad wrestling. It's um, Grado. Give her one. That's a good one. Give her one. Mate, give her one. You can't just stop saying give her one. You can't just keep telling everybody. Give her one. You can't just stop telling everybody. Give her one. It's as if you want to do something else to them. He's what, right, man? Give her one of those. He's what, right, man? Give her it. You know what, man? You want it to her? You want it to her? You want it to her? Are you a wrestling fan? Yeah. Come on, take a wee flyer, hen. Who are you fan anyway? Australia? Give him a kiss, would you? Give him a kiss on the cheek, huh? South Australia. South Australia? He's a kiss, go. He's go a on. Kiss. Go, he's a kiss. Go, he's a kiss. He's a kiss. Go. Hey, great. Come on. Great. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. For Mark, the last couple of days before a show are always tense. As well as fine-tuning a roster of 40 wrestlers, there are worries closer to home. Money's always an uh, issue before a show because it's all tied up, and then you don't get paid for an event until after the event's happened. 
So, like, the same way people are skint right before they get their wages, that's kind of the way I'm all in it. Like, I'm the main skint I'm all, like, for the whole month. So, um, sometimes you might need to get a tap off your family or some stuff like that. Um, that is a pain in the ass, but uh, it has to be done, doesn't it? I might be skint in a lot of the time. But I'm, I'm never skint to the point where my family, the food's no, the fridge hasn't got food in it. I'm, I'm never skint to the point that the house isn't heated. I'm never skint to the point that, you know what I mean, we can't live. But I'm skint sometimes. Like, really skint. Like, mega skint, you know what I mean? I'm investing my time and money in these people. I know in the long run this will pay off. Right. Come It's not all gloomy. And it's not only money that's playing on Mark's mind. Danny's got autism, but he's got, uh, is it Asperger's or something like that's called, I think. Um, they're still doing a bunch of tests and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm a bit weird, you know what I mean? Some of the things I do might not be perceived as normal, so I don't know, like, there's certain things I'm like, oh, that's stuff I did as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, maybe, maybe he's over-exaggerating a wee bit. For everyone involved, the Edinburgh show is an important stepping stone on the way to the biggest show of their lives at Glasgow's ABC. And with the match against his hero, Colt Cabana, just days away, Grado's into his final preparations. <laughs> Remember, just give him my usual. Where are you fighting in I'm fighting a guy called Colt Cabana for America. How amazing is that? See all the other wrestlers, they've all got decent bodies and all that, so I need to make up for it in other ways. We're getting a cracking haircut and a tan. Cheers for that, catch you later on. Bye. Hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I like it, is that Bernard Wands? No, that is, that's good, that's yeah. turning the back. <laughs> it's the day of the Edinburgh show, and once the new outfit is safely packed away, Grado's almost ready to join the busload of friends waiting outside. Was uh -huh. a bag of clean, clean pants in there? Graham, why do you ask these things? Well, there's nothing in my throat. No, there is. Every day, they're out in the line. It's a really, really big deal, um, and I'm terrified, <laughs> but in a good way. It's good to be nervous when you're not nervous, you're not enjoying it. <laughs> once again, maybe once I got a wee look at the venue and I see the ring, then that's when I'll start getting fear. That's when the nerves will start kicking in. Hopefully. Adam, where's the hard cam? Um, after the ring's finished, they're going to put the barriers up. Cheers, mate. Can I get everybody over here for the run through now, please? The reason we are here is because of all oh, yous. He's a lot fucking good. I've been telling you for years he's a lot good. Well, this is fucking proof of it. You know what I mean? Um, and this isn't like the top of the mountain or any shit like this. This is us just starting. So I want us to look back in a couple of years and think that this is a small venue. He's a earned this. And uh, here's Chris run through. 
I'm trying not to get paranoid tonight. This is a one night I don't want to be paranoid. Please don't be paranoid. Just go out there and lap up and enjoy it. Don't want that to go wrong. What does this look like, on? Nah, you, does this look alright? No. Doing a bit, you think? I wanted to up a bit, I think. Aye. Does my belly make it look stupid? That'll give, that'll give, mate. Look, in the middle, see if you give me that. Hit a bit of hammer. Got to sort these tables. After I sort these tables, that's everything pretty much ready to go. Then I can relax a wee bit. With the stage set and the expectation built to fever pitch, the very first fight is Grado versus Colt. Enjoy yourself out there. No, 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 you know what I'm saying? This is fun. This is fun. Um, we're I'm gonna kick your ass. I know, I know, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this place started. Grado's big moment next. For Mark, the success of the Edinburgh show brings relief. But for him and his family, the whole idea of ICW means more than ticket sales. It's also helped him in recent weeks with his son, Danny. We had a hand the other week there where Danny woke up for nursery, right? And I went, it's time for nursery, son. And he went, all right, cool. All right, me, get ready. And he went, I don't want to go to nursery. I went, how? I feel different. He said, I feel, he said, I feel different. Right? And I wanted to burst into tears. And I walked into our room, and I greeted in the other room. I have no problem with this being on camera, right? And I walked back into the room, and I pulled out an ICW video, put it on the video player, put Danny on my knee, showed him the video. There was a clip where I came out in the crowd and said something. I went, who's in the wrestling ring? He went, Daddy. All right, cool, son. He went, see your daddy. Your daddy's different. You don't want to be the same as everybody else, because that's boring. And he hugged me, and then he went to nursery. And for a week before that, he put his hands over his eyes when he got to nursery. So when I say that to him, he didn't do it again. It meant the world to me. It was like the best thing in the world, man. With the Edinburgh fight night over, it's party time. Despite like running the biggest show I've ever run, uh, I've probably walked away with the least amount of money I've ever had. Um, I would have had an alright amount of money, but I spent about a thousand pounds on hotel rooms for a lot of the wrestlers. Um, I basically just wanted to party. I wanted to enjoy it. I wanted everybody to feel like they were, they were stars. 
you know what I mean? So I've never had the chance to do that before, so I just did that, you know what I mean? The thing is, right, that, that money, I could have spent on this, that and the next thing, and it would have meant nothing to me. See that night? I'll never forget that night, so... Is that, is that money well spent? I, I think so. Having spent the profits from the Edinburgh show, Mark's chance at the big time and the opportunity to finally start making some serious money for his wrestlers rests solely on the ABC show in Glasgow in just a few weeks' time. So I'm sitting at about 250 tickets sold to last count. So that's what, 950 to go in six weeks. So it's got to take a, a portion of our cunning, maybe all of our cunning. On top of the 950 tickets still to shift, Mark's received the news that one of his biggest box office draws, Grado, will be away on holiday on the big fight night. I'm going to Vegas in October and I'm going to miss the biggest ICW show of the year, which is a pure blooper. But at the end of the day, where does it stop? Do you cancel holidays for wrestling? Do you cancel holidays for the biggest show of the year? I tell my brother, I says, look, I'm thinking about coming back a day early for Vegas to make the ICW show. And she went, ah, for nuts. She was like, no way are you coming home a day early for a, for a wrestling show. Hey. ICW is not about one person. ICW is not about you coming to see one performer. ICW is about you coming to see a package. Gail's part of that package. Would I rather he was here? If I had the choice, of course I would rather he was here. He's an important part of that package, definitely. <laughs> For Grado, the tinkering with his image continues. He's bleached his hair blonde, and he's not convinced. What colour have I got? Medium brown. Uh, medium brown. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get this hair sorted. So I'm going to see if I can get some hair dye for Morrison's, but I don't know what exact colour what I'm meant to be getting. So I'm not exactly a connoisseur of hair, am I? Come on, Dan. I phone one one eight. I've got, currently my hair is bleached blonde, and I'm going on holiday next week, and I'm needing it to be uh, brown. I'm looking for somebody that can tell me which colour, which hair dye to buy, so that I can dye my hair back to my normal colour, which was brown. But it wasn't too brown. It wasn't hazelnut. It wasn't copper. It wasn't chocolate. It was just boring, dull, all brown. What did I get? How do you get colour brown for the shops? Well, the wobby shut the now. If you know get anybody that can put me on advice, if you get anybody what about him that blew out the straighteners, Nicky Clark? Nicky Clark. Aye, put him in. Good afternoon, this is Nicky Clark, Mesa here to Donna. May I help you? Donna, it's yourself. I need to know the exact colour of hair dye I would need to buy from the shops so that I can go back to my normal hair colour. That's How much would that cost if there was any appointments here to get my hair dyed there? From, from £100, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Aye, that's fine with me. No problem, speak to Thanks very much, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Grado has a wrestling match coming up in London in a few days' time. And with the appointment booked, he's decided to kill two birds with one stone. But Mark has other worries on his mind. He still has 800 tickets to sell for the big fight night, write Grado out of the show, and plan a vital publicity stunt. And he's rallying the troops. Hello? Grado, mate. Um, I know you're not going to be on the Fear and Loving show, right? But obviously we're going to do an angle where we write you. So see you until then. Are you up for doing like, some stuff? Maybe we'll go away one night, a bunch of the boys, and we'll hang up a bunch of publicity stunts for the day in Glasgow. Are you up for that? You want random? Mate, let's do that. Let's see if there's a way we can actually, not actually get you random, but make it look like you've been random. I'm well up for that shit, man. Mark's taking some of the wrestlers to a caravan park in Ayrshire, where they'll spend the night figuring out ways to create a buzz around the upcoming big fight night and sell those last 800 tickets.
laps there, man. My shins nearly combusted. Oh. Legitimately. Go eight, right, you want me to be serious with you? I've got 800 tickets to sell, right? See if I sell all these tickets. I can yeah. buy for my Wayne's Christmas. See if I can. I don't, I can't. I you've got to be serious for five minutes and no cut out with fucking stupid jokes. And you're fucking really smart guys and you've got to come to some of the fucking best ideas gone, right? It's got to take us five fucking minutes today and then we can get honking drunk. Is that for the lads, man? I fucking dead, man. Yeah. fucking dead, man. Like, we've got one midget. Chris, if he was chasing a pure group of us and he ran into a flash mob in George Square, through the tune of a fucking chopper, pure fear running away from Chris, who's yelling, we'll fucking get you in George Square. We get to George Square and there's a fucking flash mob waiting. I filled out an application yeah, form like online yeah. for take me out. Aye, aye. Right. Daft is no. Why don't we all sign up for mad fucking reality shows? Hold on, hold on. I get Andy Downs to make my graphic, right? David Blaze, take me out. Big Dave, you'll feed you his gravy. <laughs> and I swear mate, to God, why have you not sent me that? I'll put it nice. It'll be fucking right, page, man. I'm waiting and an addition so coming back. Bro. David, mate, you knock your iron, right? That's a beast, mate. Do that. <laughs> fucking do that, bro. Do it. That's a beast. Right, that's one liner that can get him. John Smeaton. Oh, the Flash. No, all these other stuff's easy. You're like, you don't even need to. Me out. I you're just double. You're yeah. getting run downs, double. Your, your big stuff. It's not going to be real. You're not actually going to get run down. That is so double, man. The fuck? I'm boss, man. Ask Gray you know, what he was up to last night, man. Yes. These people gonna regret being such a dick. Yeah. Apparently, you've got a bit of social media. Maybe you for last night. This is oh, an embarrassment for yourself. Oh, no, man. I said to you, don't, don't do it. And he says, no, it's cool. Oh, I read Gado for him, certain WWE superstars and saying he was going up oh, fuck it and he was coming on away from the Shire to kill them. <laughs> oh, no, man. That was the first one. Oh, what? <laughs> you fucking shot. He went here, leave a message. He just went after one. Oh. With their unique style of brainstorming behind them, it's time for ICW's first publicity stunt. You know, Davey, mate, this is either the greatest or the most fucking ridiculous idea you've ever had. <laughs> Davey, quick, 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 fucking quick, Davey. Mark and Davy Boy are on a mission to dress one of Glasgow's most iconic statues in an ICW-branded T-shirt and cone. Raise them up, mate. Clip it. Right, go for it. I want to fit in the bottom. Just you start fucking rattling that T-shirt on, mate, right? This is scary, man. Shoot me, I shoot. It's no gun, Dallas. What? It's no stapling on. It's no stapling? Fucking. Council dated because people are going up and falling off, not myself, so now they tell us to put up a cone. Mate, I'm proper shitting myself, man. Make sure the ICW's at the front, bro. Bring your, put your leg on there and bring your leg out. You're, you're fucking fine, mate. I'm holding the bottom, so it's sturdy, right? You're good to go, Davey. Just a wee bit around that shoot. Right, on you go, mate. You're fucking laughing. I think I've just done a shite. <laughs> right, let's get out of here, mate, before we get rumbled. That's the stuff that gets attention, you know what I mean? With a job well done, the photo's up online, and it's now up to the power of social networking to spread the word. It's got 85 now. No, 93, just clicked up to it in eight comments. Kidding me, on? Huh? No, no, mate, I'm not, this is for real. They've been wanting to catch people doing this red-handed for years, lol. You might get some unexpected press coming your way, but hey, any publicity is good publicity. What would the police say if they showed up? What do you think? What could they get days for? Would they need to face a statue? Grado's on his way to his wrestling match in London. Oh, I've got a piece of crunch supper in here waiting for me, man. 
to the wrestling good times. <laughs> but his main concern is his image and whether celebrity hairstylist Mickey Clark will be able to return him to his natural self. Hi there, I got an appointment at nine o'clock. So do you have to keep really fit then when you're doing... Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. You better believe it. I'm at the gym seven times a week. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a barber's where when you're getting your hair cut, you can get grilled chicken marinated in lemon, ch chilli, ginger, coriander, served with grilled mushrooms, green beans, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, beetroot, spring onions and roasted pine nuts. I'll need to go back to Cheryl and give her some of these ideas that you can get a scoff while you're getting your hair done. Don't get me wrong, you can get in and get a roll and slice next door for you. Yeah, Cheryl and bring it in and sit when you're eating, but that's just not the same, isn't it, no? So where do you normally get it cut? Cheryl's, Miss Davison. You ever heard of Cheryl's? Aye, Miss Davison. No, nah. never heard of Cheryl's. Next to the Fisher Fine Foods in New Street, Miss Davison. Okay. Mm. That's amazing. That's class. Right. How you doing, big guy? Pleased to meet you. I'm Gredo. How you doing? I'm very well. Aye, aye, I'm, aye, brand new. I'm a professional wrestler for, for the Shire for Stevenson. I've got my leotard done for you. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I know it's I know I can. I don't usually. I don't. I, I usually don't usually wear it when I'm out in London, out in the town. But I have the day. Wait, can I get you to see my catchphrase? Just say, Gredo, it's your cell. Uh -huh. <laughs> say that again. It's your. You ever walked in with the tune before and you've went, Oh Margaret, it's yourself! No, I've no. never heard of that one. Three, two, one. Alright, Grado, it's yourself. Nicky Clark, it's yourself! Grado, it's yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. Lovely to meet you. See you later, Nicky, thanks very much. Alright, All right. see you later, trips. Thanks very much. With his hair dyed, Grado is ready for his holiday in Vegas. Go for a munch, let's go man, I'm absolutely starving. Because I wasn't for paying £13 pound for a couple of bits of thing with. In there. In Glasgow, Mark and Helen have an appointment at Danny's nursery to assess his latest progress. You want James to do it? Okay. Right, hold on. When I discovered my son had autism, I didn't deal with it. I refused to accept that he had autism. Um, I was like, no, no, Danny's cool, Danny's fine. You want to know what we're doing today? Okay, first we're going to? Nursery. Nursery. I just shut myself off it all um, and bottled it up inside and it just, I started drinking there. Didn't talk to anybody about it and that was the worst thing you could do. Is he going to be able to like live on his own? Is he going to be able to like cook? Is he going to have a girlfriend? Is he going to this and that? That's what upset me. Eventually, I realised it wasn't going to severely affect his life. He is an incredibly smart boy, really smart, and it's almost like a superpower now. Like he's got about a photographic memory, I've been told. And how's, that's not going to hurt you in life, you know what I mean? The results of Danny's assessment will decide what type of school he will attend next year. We just got told there that Danny can go prob is probably going to like a mainstream school. Not even a mainstream school with a unit, which is still like special he'll needs. A, he'll have additional support, but he'll have the support that he needs. Aye, but no no different than any other way. Brilliant. I'm I'm early man enough. I can't wait to go home for my ma. With the biggest show of their lives now just five days away, the pressure's on. And Jack Jester's getting a new outfit for the occasion. Yeah, just a, a light grey one and a dark grey one and a, and a black and then a light and then a leather. Like, I don't order my, my wrestling gear online because I can't talk to the person and I can't, I can't stand and put it on and say, no. Yeah, because we've got plenty up here. That's why I've got Iona. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I like things to be done a certain way. Like, if I'm going to a show, I pack my bag, the same order, the same routine, because then I know that I've got everything. Like, I've got drawers for everything, I know where everything is, and it's just, if, when it's like hectic chaos, I kind of relax. Like, I don't know how people can function. So see, like, like that? That's pointless. Yeah. Like, I can barely see that. I just, it makes me feel better when I'm really, when I'm 100% happy with something. I would say teal, teal's like that. Uh, no, but teal is bad in wrestling. My dad's the same, to be honest. My dad's pretty, 
you know, like when it comes to his dress sense and his like, colour matching and stuff, like my dad at one point like, used to have like, a pair of glasses for every colour of clothes that he would ever wear, like, so he could match his glasses to his shoes and stuff, and I think I've picked up for him. I started wrestling when I was 15, I've been non-stop since then. Thousands of matches all over the country, but the one person who's never seen me is my dad. He's got his own reasons, but come the ABC, the championship match, this is the first time he's ever going to see me. First time he's ever going to see his son wrestling in front of him, ever. He's never seen a DVD, he's never seen a videotape, he's never seen any of the stuff that I've recorded. So it's going to be a big deal for me and a really big night for him. But this is not the only change awaiting Jester. On Sunday night's show, Mark's decided to crown him his new ICW champion. When I'm picking somebody to be the next ICW champion, I, I, like everything else is done off the cuff, you know? But that, I take a lot of time. And I usually know who the next champion's gonna be a year before they become the champion. It's a very um, special thing in wrestling when it's a belt that actually means something. Um, because the person who's the champ, they, 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 you know what I mean, that, they hold that with pride, they go out and bust their ass on every show they're on for you, they're meant to be the champion, you know what I mean? And Jester will be a great champion. It's, it's a poignant moment when that belt goes from one to the other. The biggest show of Mark's career is now just one day away, and he's still 450 tickets shy of a sellout. In a final publicity push, He's organised a flash mob pillow fight in George Square. I'm nervous. You're nervous? Aye. I'm not. I'm going to get the jail. Go. I'm waiting to go to my show. But what we're doing is not even bad. Do you know what I mean? It's just the world's pure shite now. Like, you're not allowed to, like, have fun. It's, uh, every, there's, like, a rule for everything. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is a pillow fight in the town. I shouldn't even be thinking in my head about getting to jail. And everybody else is after your health and safety, you know, have you done a risk assessment? Oh, shut the fuck up, man. Bye bye, buddy. Got your kiss? Mwah. Do you want to shut the door? Yeah. Okay, you gonna slam it shut? Mark's filming the pillow fight. Once it's online, he's hoping it will be enough of a spectacle to get people talking about ICW. And more importantly, buy the last remaining tickets for the big fight night. I'm more nervous about this than I'm about the show tomorrow. Because if I get to jail for this, then uh, no matter what we say, I won't get out to the Monday, so I'll miss the show. There's the post, they'll wait five minutes, wait five minutes. are afraid of things that they don't understand. I think in life, a lot of people think you're meant to just get a 95 and get a house and get a mortgage and this and that, and you're not meant to go and do things that you want to do. And the thing is, you can go and do the things you want to do, just a lot of people haven't got the courage to go and pursue those career paths. What's the, the John Lennon quote? When he was young, the teacher asked him, what do you want to be when you're older? He said, happy, and he went, you don't understand the question. And he's like, no, well, you don't understand life. I think that should be Aye. Aye, man. I think we've got to get a clean-up bill for us. I bet you do. It's show day, and the biggest fight night in ICW history has finally arrived. Mwah. Love you, buddy. OK, Daddy will see you later on. Daddy will see you tomorrow morning, OK? You have fun with Granny, OK? Good luck, honey, right? You'll be brilliant, right? I know, sweetie. Right, I'll see you later. Bye, honey. Bye-bye. They've not even put just the ICW, they've put in Saint Champion. I didn't even think they'd have enough letters. They've, they've, they've not got an A. <laughs> Fair and loving, but in Saint Championship Wrestling, that's mental. That's pure trippy, man. That's quite insane, seeing... We'll name up on that sign. 
<laughs> Remember about a year ago, me and you were stuck lying at the road, Stephen, where he says, how cool would it be to have ICW's name up there? About, about a year to the day, honestly. If you were to sit and tell me, like, three or four years ago that we were going to do all the things we've done oh. in the past three or four <laughs> months, I, I, I wouldn't believe you for a second. Tonight, in the biggest match of his career, Jack Jester will become the new ICW champion. And watching from the crowd for the very first time will be his dad. I don't think there's a better, a better show of everything to, to kind of go, like to, like, to bring you along to one show, to experience, like, you know, the full, the full kind of spectrum, the nights, like the night, regardless of how much your brain's telling you. He's hurt, he's hurt, he's hurt. Just remember that I'm, I'm all right, because I'm, I'm, I'm in control. I know where I'm going with, you know what I mean? So don't, uh, don't get the urge to jump the barrier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that was my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> How can I suppose it's only a once my boy gets through a bit of uh, some of the spicy sides? Uh, sorry, I can, I can My dad couldn't be prouder. He's always supported me. He's never, he's never forced me to be a, a certain type of person. I could have been a bit embarrassing for him looking the way I look and dressing the way I dress. He could be like, I'll just meet you in town. But he, he never has, like, he, he embraces it and he, can, he still calls me the Wayne. When the time comes for me to have, have kids, I've got, a good, I've got good role models. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, looking, I'm glad it's this one I've come to. Aye, it's perfect timing, mm -hmm. it really is. After months of planning, and the last few frantic days of ticket sales, the biggest show in ICW history is finally here. But is it sold out? The reason we're in this big building tonight is because all you is fuck out today, me, because of you's breaking your back for this company. Everything you've done. You think this is good? Well, this is good, but it doesn't make your wages any higher. I want your wages to all be higher. I want you to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I met a full-time living a professional fucking wrestling, right? Thank you very much for everything you've done for this company, right? Let's keep doing it. And I swear to God, the next people to get paid is fucking every single one of yous, because you deserve it. All right, guys? Have a fucking fantastic show. <laughs> Is it good enough that I'm no fucking busking a week from now? I don't know yet, I'll need to go and check. But it looks good. I don't know. It looks alright. I pull you, out we go, get to the stage, I'll dig hair pull, set the table up. With the show sold out, the pressure is now on Jester to pull off the performance of a lifetime for the fans and his dad. None of this match, because I'm terrified that one of my mates gets hurt. Because um, they both put their back for this company just in general in normal life. So I think what they're going to do in the title switch terrifies me. No clue what these human beings do each other. Like, what they do for your entertainment. People don't understand what we do for these people. And if they did understand, maybe they would understand why I want these people to make fucking money. That's my worst nightmare, isn't it? The storylines are already written. 
and both Jester and his opponent know who will win tonight. But the blood is real, and Jester's putting himself through a lot of pain to give the fans a show they'll never forget. I knew going in that my dad was going to have difficulty with it because he's never, he's never seen me before, he's never seen me wrestling before, and I knew that this was going to get serious. <laughs> just remember that, just keep saying it to yourself. If at any point during this show you think he's in big danger, just remember, I'm not. I'm not. Turns out I kind of was. Most of the time when things get serious in a match, like if you hurt yourself or, you know, you know, you're bleeding too much. Your opponent will tell you when it's enough. You know, and there is times where, you know, like, like I've been bleeding so much that I can't see. I mean, I just can't. Like you're, you're wiping it, and it's in your eyes. You're wiping it. You're sl you're slipping on it because it's it's gone from your head to the floor so quick that you're actually slipping in your own blood. Can he see he's bleeding so? You know I mean, I don't like that shit. Can he fight? No, these, look, he's fucking scarred. You know what I mean? They can't walk for days after us. It was good pressure. It was just, it was almost like. You know, I knew what I had to do, but before the match started, seeing all them there, it just it, it just made you calm, you know what I mean? And you just think, they're all here, let's do this. Let's show them what it's all about. And I did. Everything was in that room at that same time, and I just, that's when I thought, I got here. Like, and I remember standing in a wrestling ring in Weems Bay in front of four folk, and I thought, I left school to do this, why have I done this? And then that night, I thought, nah, there's my answer. It's a surreal feeling now, like, see your, your son getting hurted like that, no, but he felt pretty well, didn't he? It's just a, it's a, it's just a job to him, isn't it? <laughs> It's just lit a fire under me even more. It's made me think, like, all right, maybe this will work. Maybe, maybe we can, you know, be full-time pros and maybe we can make a full-time living off this business. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we branch out. New cities, bigger shows, bigger, badder, better, you know what I mean? Go faster stripes, 3D and all that. And um, see how far we can go with it, you know what I mean? And one of my favourite quotes of all time is, uh, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you're still amongst the stars. So basically that's what, what we're going to try and do. We're going to shoot for the moon, and if we miss, well, fuck it. That's right. I fucking ended up the last Vegas in Nevada. All right, big man, how you doing? You all right? How you doing, mate? Hey, I fucking loved it. Well, there's more about Insane Championship Wrestling and unseen footage at bbc.co.uk slash Insane Fight Club. To Swansea next, we're at the toughest time of year. A new series reveals the realities of living on the streets. While well, over on BBC Three in just less than ten minutes, it's American Dead.